Welcome to my channel. As you probably guessed by the title of the channel, Feedback Pete, and the content of my channel, um, I'm a huge Thomson Twins fan. I have been for 30 odd years now. I first became a fan in 1984 and been a diehard fan ever since. And I thought with this video I'd take the time to show you some of my um, favourite pieces from my record collection. They're not necessarily the rarest or most valuable pieces, but they're the items <coughs> which I feel are my favourites personally. Things that um, I enjoy the most and I would recommend a lot of these items, these records, if you can find them on eBay or Discogs because they're really worth tracking down. So um, I don't think there's any video on YouTube like this already, so there's a gap in the market, but I'm going to start first with the biggie. Most people who are diehard fans will know this catalogue number um, when you, and know what it is. When you say twins, one to eight, people, diehard fans will know we're talking about rollover. This is rollover 12 inch which is a catalogue number twins one to eight. This is probably the second most sought after piece of Thompson Twins <coughs> records. The only one which is rarer and more sought after than this 12 inch is a seven inch version. This came out in 1984, I believe. I could be wrong, but it was due to be the first single of Here's the Future Days but when it was released around at that time Tom Bailey took a bad turn and collapsed in a restaurant due to over exhaustion and working too hard and it was ordered by the doctor to take a, a well earned break so the day these um, got released some made it to shops and possibly even onto shelves but there was a message sent out to all record stores across the country that this record was to be immediately withdrawn and taken off the shelves and taken off sale. I think a rumour has it that Tom said maybe it was a bad omen but also if Tom was sick and they were taking a rest they wouldn't be able to do or a promotion for a record like TV appearances, radio appearances and performances and all this uh, promotion that goes with it so it was uh, decided to cancel this record altogether so cause it was withdrawn a lot of the copies were destroyed some fans managed to get a hold of them on a day or in recent years but they don't often come up for sale on eBay because people that have them in their collection will be diehard fans and they won't be prepared to part with them. So it's well sought after, so it's like the holy grail of Thompson Twins memorabilia. It's got 12 inch version roll over again, Girls in Paradise on the B side, the extended mix of, it's like an intermittent version of King for a Day. I was lucky enough to get this one a few years ago. It came up on sale on Discogs about five appeared that were found in a dump bin in real groovy in New Zealand and my friend he already had his copy so he didn't need one my friend Andrew Merlin but he messaged me that day and says Peter you have to get on Discogs there's a four or five rollovers going for sale act quick um, if you want one or else you'll miss out I thought about it for a few minutes it was a lot of money compared to what I'd spent before on Thompson Twin stuff but when I actually look at it, it wasn't a lot of money spent on buying this because some person did buy one of those rollovers and resold it immediately and another fan bought this for £500 so it just shows you how much this can actually go for I have to treat this with kid gloves, I hate handling it but if you go to um, there's a great site on the web called Popsic. I 
and you pull up you can it's a great resource you can type in any bands any song it's like a good place for valuing your records if you want to know price of it just put in Thomas and Twins Rover as I have done and you'll see prices you'll see the one 6th of December 2017 went for £500 next one a 12 a 7 inch version of the mint went for £274 in 2012 behind that another 12 inch at £255 and then another 12 inch at £190 so you can see they do go for a lot of money and you could theoretically um, sell it on for £500 that's the most I've ever seen it go for so um, if you can work enough to have one of these um, well done for having that in your collection but I'll leave a link for Pop Psych down below in the um, description because it's a great resource if you want to check out the price of records and things so I'd highly recommend Pop Psych as a place to go Next one, another favourite of mine, in the name of Love, 7 inch. Now it just looks like Greg or 7 inch, but when I got this in a Glasgow record fair, opened it up and there's a press release inside. Showed this to Tom a few years back and mind it. Went and read it and he seemed quite fascinated by it. This press release is paper. It's printed with the old Thompson Twins font and four-headed logo. And what it says says in the um, press release, and it's addressed January 11th, 1983, to a Mr. Ian Suckworth. Dear Ian, thank you for your letter. I'm sorry you were disappointed with the purchase of Anolath. In fact, we were very disappointed with the record as well. The fact is, we went into the studio and produced a dub version of the track, the product of. We presented it to the record company for inclusion on the Animal Laugh 12 inch. When we got the white labels of Animal Laugh, we were extremely irritated to note that they had used the wrong track. Namely the original version of a product of. They claimed it wasn't their fault and that it was too late to do anything about it. By way of recompense, please find enclosed an extremely rare copy of Make Believe on White Label. This record is, in fact, worth an awful lot of money and will hopefully stop you complaining for at least six months. We might have some gigs at the beginning of March. If so, see you there. Love, John Haid. And it's signed by John Haid, the manager, in ballpoint pen. So it's a nice little find for me. So I love that one. So it's makes it special. Second one is in the name of love again. Now I actually have two copies of this but it's a in the name of love edit remix. I believe this is Dutch. It's on the hands of label. Quite a plain inconspicuous cover but inside it is a nice pink coloured vinyl with the B side, B side is in the beginning, beginning. This is a nice find. Thompson Twins didn't do a lot of coloured vinyl. They did point to a picture of this, which is really, really nice, due to the designer Andy Airfix, the legend that he was, and his great design work. But when it came to Colour vinyl, apart from the reissues in recent years, there wasn't a lot of coloured vinyl except for maybe a red flexi disc from the Coast of Bone period. So that's another nice find if you can get that. Try Discogs, you'll see it will come up. Discogs is always handy. Now, I know some of you have got this and it's came up on EB a few times, so it's possible to get hold of this, but I would recommend this one also. It's a Thompson Twins promotional record and a nice sleeve. It's got the Arista Records address on the back. Red, I love that font, I love the colour and it's just plain and simple but it works, it's really effective. Inside it's got a nice glossy black and white 
photo of Tom Nolana, which is a classic picture from around 1987, which is real nice. Then also you have a two-page Thompson Twins press release and biography. And then the promotional record itself. Oops. Which I do believe is probably two or three tracks on that. And I'm sure one of them will do get that off. But it's a really good item. So if you're looking for something interesting for your collection, do try and track this one down because I love this as well. This next one is another one I've seen a fans offering part of the um, East collection for sale and that this is included. This is another one that comes up now and again. It's an interview sampler. It's around the same time as Close to the Bone from 1987. This is a candid conversation with Tom Daly, Alana Curry and Close to the Bone producer Rupert Hine who died not too long ago. Interview conducted by Larry the Duck Dunn. Side 1 has the interview, it's 23 minutes and 15 seconds. And then side 2 has 4 songs from in, uh, Close to the Bone, 20th Century, extended edition of Get That Love, Long Goodbye and Bush Baby. This is a promotional only not for sale one. So this is, um, again, a really nice item worth having. And I, I've always loved the Arista record label with the blue with the sky and pink sky and the black mountains silhouette. It's always, always thought that was real nice and I think that's mainly kind of seems to be America that gets that. But it's quite a good interview. It's interesting in the talk, um, very open and honest about things that's happening in the noise around that time, which is quite a difficult year for Tom Alana. So look out for this one if you can find it. Next one, this is just um, just a regular copy of Make Believe 12 Inch, but what makes this interesting is it's signed in ballpoint pen by four members of the band. Got the Alana Curry, Tom Daly, as it says, best wishes Joe Weeby, but what I really like about this, and I'm, I'm guessing that's um, Chris Bell, who was a drummer at the time. Um, around that period, that's um, who I've always thought it to be, but it's just interesting to see four um, autographs. I've never seen, to my memory, any autographed records that had the original members from the six or seven piece band, so that's quite interesting. This one is a few years old now, but it's one of my more recent um, acquisitions. Recorder Free. It's an LP magazine. It has an LP inside with two Thompson Twins tracks from the early days. I think Recorder Free was a magazine from Bristol, if I'm correct. Politics. And Vendredi Saint, which is quite a quirky track. Politics is 2 minutes 20 seconds and Vendredi Saint is 3 minutes 10 seconds. And inside there's a interview with different bands and by members including Tom Daly. It says here, the partition, participation rap by Tom Daly. And it said it was... Um, there's a bit somewhere that says about why this album came together and why the Thompson Twins were involved. I think they were partly inspired um, 
inspiration for this album. But it's nevertheless, it's a interesting one. It's something a bit different if you're looking for something unusual for your collection. It's certainly different from the normal stuff. So that's Recorder Free. It's got Robert Fripp on it and PB Davies. If you know any of these artists, Frank Top. Well, I know that's a magazine, but essential bulk. So that's recorder free. I'm going to go down now because I've got a second LP magazine. I'll just skip these and go straight to this one. Debut. Thanks to a fan from America, I also have a second copy of this one. This one I got in Manchester. My auntie bought it for us. We back in the day in the 80s in Manchester when we were in the record shop in the Ardale Centre. It's a nice item. This is issue one of an LP magazine. Original price at 2 99 Features Snowy White, Wang Chung, which I love, I love Wang Chung. And Big Country, of course, from Scotland. It's Scott Thompson Twins on the front cover. An LP inside, which features Thompson Twins watching. And in page 10, there's a sound story. And it is an interview with Joe Weeby. So there's Michael Jackson in here, Tracy Ellman, Ultravox, Cocktail Twins, Stell Council. So there's quite a lot of good stuff in here, your 80s music. And there's the interview with Joe Weeby. Quite a nice, big interview. And also goes on to page two. Second page. Nice Thompson Twins picture again. Appeared on the singles collection, that photograph. And somewhere inside there's also an advertisement for Into the Gap on CD. So this one I would definitely recommend debut LP. It'll come up online now and again. And it was they were featured in a later edition as well for that magazine. I acquired these a few years ago off of Vivian with her help. Vivian Taylor ran the Thompson Twins fan club called T-Fax and she helped me get those. She had them in her collection and she was getting rid of them. It's a 12 inch single of the Gap called Remix version. Nice Hollywood photo shoot picture and it's got the Gap and out of the Gap and I believe, yep, this one is Australian. Yep, this is, this is an Australian cover, so a bit more unusual. And this artwork's nice, it's worth getting just for the cover alone. Another unusual 12 inch Thompson Twins Lies. You'll notice this one Lies, Lies font, but it's the 84 Thompson Twins logo in covers, and it's the cover of You Take Me Up. It's got the Japanese obi strips, this Japanese, Japanese did good stuff. It includes Lies extended version, Down Tools, We Are Detective long version, and Still Water. So again, another interesting record, $3.99. But um, a really nice record to get hold of. Sure a lot of you all recognise this one. Thompson Twins Live LP. This was um, given to fans who were to attend the cancelled tour in 1985 and this was as part of compensation for not getting to the shows. This was given out to all fans who had tickets for the shows. These were all signed on the back by Tom Joan Alana in metallic ink. And John Hayde, the manager, he was selling a few copies of these a while back, so that's another favourite of mine. This one again, 
recognised by TTLP1. This is the live LP again, but I got this one off of Vivian. It's the live one, but it's like a test pressing or something. It's in German. It's got a ballpoint pen. It says on it something about rooster plants. Um, I'm sure Kirsten, if you're watching, or any of you other German fans, you'd be able to translate this. But it's Ron Peters. He's a daddy of all Thompson Twins collectors. His collection's big enough to open a museum, so he'll, I'd imagine, have this, or he'll know what it is. So Ron, if you're watching, is this a test pressing? What exactly is it? Uh, maybe I have to check on the skulls later on, but he'll know what it is, I'm sure, because he's, if he hasn't got it in his collection, it doesn't exist. So I was happy, happy to get that as well. I from 1988, Thompson Twins Best Of Greatest Mixes. What I've always loved about this one is a cover, silver, metallic, and the unusual colour of the three headed logo. To me, this one always seemed quite luxurious. With it being silver, it gave it a premium look and appearance, which I always liked. Seems quite nice, artwork's nice, it's um, quite good. But this one is a promo version. And you can see it doesn't say promo on record, but on the cover, it's got it stamped in gold, gold, uh, top and bottom. One for promotion only, not for sale, and ownership and all rights reserved. So good to have a promo version of a regular Thompson Twins album, which has got, a, I'm sure I'll, I'll agree, fantastic artwork. That was the first Thompson Twins greatest hits to ever come out. So this is the first part of my video done. I'll do a second video and in that one I'll show you some of the pieces I like from 90s onwards like Feedback Max and Babel and stuff. Come inside and all that. But I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and let me know what you've got in your collection. What are your favourite pieces? Is there anything else that you think I should get? And what pieces do you enjoy? What's your favourite Thompson Twins record or piece of memorabilia? Let us know in the comments. I'll speak to you later and here's to future days. Bye.